Hello and welcome to this new video uh, which is all about the new features that have been added to Neon in the last couple of versions. Um, it's a break from our tutorial series but I think it's important to highlight some of the advanced features that we've added and some of the changes that have happened along the way. In particular I've had a lot of feature requests that we've now fulfilled and I want to go over those and let you all know exactly uh, what's available. Now I'm going to start by using the built-in tone generator to demonstrate uh, the new fade curves. Since it's pretty hard to visualize uh, the curves on a normal waveform. So let's hit the menu button and pick new document and just pick mono for a start. Now the tone generator is actually in effect hidden away in the operations menu. So if you set the operations menu and then apply effect and then generator, uh, we get the tone generator. And I'm going to we'll go with a 100 hertz signal at 100% volume. But the problem is we haven't actually got any content currently to our file. So if you hit the operations button and select the insert space, we're going to insert some maybe four bars of uh, space. And I need to zoom into that. And then uh, we can uh, generate a tone. Now I'm going to go with 50 hertz instead of 100 just so that we can see it better. But uh, we just hit the apply button and then we can zoom in and just make sure yeah, we, we've got that there. If you zoom right in, it will become quite uh, smooth. Um, but I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that we've got a certain amount on screen. And if I uh, apply a, a, a fade to that, we're going to see it. So if we select an area within that uh, tone and then hit the fade button, we've got the traditional linear fades, which we had in the previous version. But now we have some uh, different fades which uh, can provide more gradual uh, fade in and out. Um, and there's even an, an S fade there as well, uh, which is not so easy to see even on this. But uh, I think people will definitely benefit from these. So that's the new fade curves and the tone generator. Now another really popular request was the ability to measure the loudness of an audio file especially if you wanted to submit that file to uh, YouTube or uh, various uh, music outlets, then they have to conform to a specific LUFS level. And there's no way of, just by playing a track that we can, we can determine that, uh, that loudness level uh, from the VU meters. But if you uh, now click on the little button above the VU meter, uh, we have two new options. Uh, one measures um, the LUFS level, of the current file which is quite quick and that measures minus 12.7 LUFS now we might want to conform to a specific level depending on where we're submitting uh, our audio file and so we can now uh, run this uh, set LUFS option now this does take a little bit of time because it runs through a series of attenuation levels to find the nearest to the specified value so that's a very useful tool for anyone wanting to uh, to submit their audio to uh, various uh, organizations that need that confirmation of LUFS so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, hidden in the uh, media bay and uh, we've got a couple of new import options and in particular the ability to import from um, uh, video and extract the audio from a video so I can select a video here uh, it's just and there's an overlapping funny. run from Ailing, and Ailing gets the ball and there are men in the box and it comes for Pablo Hernandez and Pablo Hernandez scores a goal for Leeds United and oh. yes guy that's so funny because I'm a Leeds United supporter but now we just hit the use button and give it a name and uh, the audio is extracted now important thing to note here it's extracted to the export. There's an overlapping run from Ailing, and Ailing gets so the... So if you're looking for it, it's in the exports. <laughs> and of course, we can load that in, re-edit, and we can even attach the edited audio back again to the original file if need be. Now, if we return back to the media bay, you'll notice that there's another icon on there, the albums uh, icon. And that allows you to browse your uh, music library. Yeah, I've got some really bad ones here and uh, select a track and, and, and import that track and it prompts for a name which it is by default the name of the uh, 
uh, the track um, and it should be uh, somewhere now just be aware that these all end up in the exported tab uh, and the import file format is M4A so uh, we can just play that back and just make sure that it's imported okay so that's a great new feature for anyone that wants to bring in uh, existing uh, audio uh, and work on it and maybe even attach to video so this has just become a a, a, a tool for video creators as well as uh, as musicians now one massive addition to 1.04 was the uh, slicer and i went over the slicer in uh, tutorial 2 so if you haven't seen that uh, go and take a look but the slicer allows us to take a sample and slice it into individual slices and we can use those to trigger remotely but we've got a new feature now um, called auto sampler now anyone that's familiar with digistics and chameleon will kind of know what this is but it works in a unique way and uh, in this case i'm going to try and uh, sample from digistics so the way this works is it sends a series of midi notes to a destination uh, instrument and uh, it records the audio um, that's coming out of that instrument and records it uh, appends those uh, those recordings end on end and automatically create slices so i'm going to just set this up uh, as i think fit so i'm going to tell the auto sampler to start at note c2 and i'm going to record eight notes and uh, i'm going to make each of those be two seconds in length although when i hit the start button here and confirm this you'll notice that uh, some samples won't be the full two, two seconds long because it automatically detects where the sample ends and truncates some of them uh, but you, you've got to admit this is incredibly easy and it's a great way of getting samples uh, from uh, an external device uh, into uh, neon for, for well for extraction or for whatever you want to do with them um, obviously when we select a slice here we can actually drag that slice uh, out of the slicer and directly to other apps I'll demonstrate that in a minute but first um, let's just uh, long press on the slice button and just ensure that uh, everything is set up okay and uh, I can bring up the uh, AUM virtual keyboard and we can play back these slices so that's just an example of how this works now it is monophonic uh, we can't play polyphonic but um, it's very very handy little uh, addition to the slicer I think now once you've got your slices you can press the uh, save slice button and give it a name and what happens is they end up in the media bay uh, in a specific folder with the various slices uh, so that's one way of exporting but the other way uh, is quite novel if we pull out the uh, the uh, files app uh, we can preview slices and find one we like and there's a nice little feature if you tap and hold on the clipboard button and then drag we can drag that selection directly out of the editor so it's a lovely little feature that whenever there's a selection within the editor you can tap and hold on the clipboard button because it's got a little chevron in the top corner it has an extended option and we can just drag that into uh, into the files app so two great ways to get your slices out of there now obviously uh, uh, one of the primary uses of neon is for recording audio now if you're in a package like cubasis which now supports uh, side chaining we can load a copy of neon on a track as an insert effect and uh, we can record uh, from the side chain if we select the side chain within um, within cubasis a long press on the record button and choose a, a channel B sidechain uh, option uh, we could now uh, press record in um, neon and start playback on the host and we're recording so in the next example I want to look at sidechaining uh, a few of you have asked what the little duck icon is in the top uh, uh, top right of the toolbar uh, within neon um, and I'm going to demonstrate that now uh, I have here a little narration that I've done, tongue-in-cheek of course, <laughs> um, but it's just a vocal uh, that um, I'm going to use uh, to demonstrate this ducking. 
So the idea here is to have a vocal line uh, fed through uh, another copy of Neon, which is an insert effect. And this copy of Neon has a backing track. Now I'm going to turn on the ducking on the toolbar and then I'm going to long press that uh, button and uh, this is where we set up the ducking options. Now we need to turn on monitor because we want to hear anything passing through. We probably need to turn the threshold down uh, to a suitable level uh, so that we get some ducking on the vocal. But the idea here, here is to actually get that ducking effect where when the vocal's going uh, the soundtrack is ducked. Notice host sync is enabled here, so when I start the transport, it begins to play, but the other one doesn't. Once upon a time, there was an editor called Neon. This editor was the king of all editors. It was made for iOS. Okay, so a little bit tongue in cheek there. <laughs> I don't take myself that seriously. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a nice little feature and we could easily have had a third uh, instance recording the result if we wished. So now I want to turn our attentions to a new addition to the warp feature which was available right back in version 1 of Neon. So as you can see here I have a simple rhythm. Now if I turn warp on and tap and hold the warp button I will get the warp options. And as you can see from here, the original tempo of this loop is supposedly 120 beats per minute. I'm not sure whether it is or not, but if I change the global tempo now to something different with warp enabled, and I try playing that back, it will sync up to that global tempo. But that is not really what I wanted to show you, so let's just revert back to the 120. Now, there's a new addition to the warp options uh, which is the chromatic button and uh, I'm going to enable the chromatic button and I'm going to long press on the MIDI setup to bring up the internal MIDI keyboard. Now if we tap and hold on the slice button it's a quick way of getting to the uh, launch options we can see C3 is the button that actually plays that sample. But if I now move either side of that C3, you'll notice that we can play chromatically. So I can play up to an octave above and an octave below. Uh, and it will play back and warp it to its original tempo. Now finally I want to show you uh, one more uh, additional feature that uh, has been requested by you guys. And that is the ability to uh, change metadata within MP3 and FLAC files. Now you can do that through Media Base. If I open Media Bay and highlight an MP3 file, if I press the rename button, I get the rename dialog. But as you can see, there's a chevron in the top corner. And if I long press that button, we get metadata options, including the ability to change the uh, embedded image. So uh, let's just find, there should be a FLAC file in here as well, somewhere, Fleetwood Mac, yep. Yeah. Uh, if I tap and hold on the rename button, you can see <laughs> I've got a very stupid picture in there, but we can quite easily um, pick an alternate picture there and uh, and save that. So that's uh, fantastic, the ability to uh, embed uh, uh, metadata in FLAC and MP3 files. I'm looking at doing the others uh, later. Um, now the only other thing I want to mention is that if you tap and hold the uh, play button we have the ability now to attenuate the output of uh, Neon. Now that's useful if you've got multiple instances going. Now you probably noticed that I quickly was changing values there without actually tapping the uh, up and down buttons. Uh, this is really useful when you're using something like uh, tempo, you want to ch change the tempo. Just tap on the tempo and then drag your finger left and right. And you can see it's great for aligning beats as well. A useful tip there. So that's just about it for uh, this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found something useful here. Don't forget to thumb up this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Plenty more tutorials on the way. So thank you for watching and see you next time.